Hello guys, welcome back to another naked wall. <laughs> Actually, if you're wondering where the green screen is, well, a day before the recording of this video, I let a friend uh, borrow the green screen. It's actually right here now. Uh, I just brought it back, so let's get this out of the way for a bit and go talk about the finale of Atla. Okay, so, book three! Holy crud, good! Very good. I mean, I mean, the entire show is good. I mean, how many times do I have to say the show is good for people to understand the show is good? Okay, so let's get right down to it. The uh, the usual format for for this favorite episode. Okay, um, I have four, and none of them are the finale. Because um, okay, before I talk about the finale, I'm gonna talk about these other things because I'm putting the finale as separate to the other things here. Kind of like I did with season three of Pony. Kind of did with the final season of Pony. So that 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 is its own special segment. Okay, so. Outside of the finale, my favorite episode, actually, including the finale, okay? Because I like the finale, is great, but I feel like other episodes are better. So let's go start with episode 5, The Beach. Like, for people who still don't get that Avatar's Airbender may or may not be anime, that, that is your anime episode. <laughs> oh man, the thing we need about anime is that... Uh, Beach episodes are a thing in anime. And there's your beach episode. Uh, yes, Atlas is not an anime, but it definitely, like, takes the inspiration from anime, and this entire episode is one big inspiration. Heck, there are two separate moments specifically about this episode that just makes it absolutely hilarious. Like, I wonder, yep, that is anime. Uh, first moment I want to mention is uh, the, the part where the old ladies start, like, you know, taking off their robes and stuff. Like, you mean the scene after May was going to just putting her eyes, like, onto Zuko's eyes like this? Putting your hands on Zuko like this? So Zuko won't watch? <laughs> and then again, who wants to see, like, like, partially naked old ladies? Anyway. And another thing, I like, there's some run random part before they do the whole volleyball thing, in which Zuko just takes off his shirt and then doves fly out in the background. Was that even necessary? No, but is it funny? Heck yeah. Is it anime? Over the top. Just flip that shirt, put his shirtless, and the doves fly out. Like it's some sort of overly dramatic scene. That is absolutely hilarious. <laughs> okay, uh, speaking of hilarious, I'm going to talk about the actual favorite episode a bit later, but right now, but that is probably my um, second or so favorite episode. Most of this is way too anime. Um, next, I'll talk about ep the, the episode following that av the Avatar and the Fire Lord, basically the the backstory for Roku and Sozin and like why the war started. And why is it basically Rohu's fault that the whole thing started? Um, yeah, it, it's, it's a, I find that a really great, ep great episode, mostly because of the whole lore bits and the backstory of Roku. Because Roku's always been like a very helpful like support character, but like it gives him an actual character, gives him his, his own little like story arc. I mean, that's just a one episode story arc, but it's still a, a very important story arc, like for him. Gives all like the backstory of Roku. It's really cool, especially considering, like, he's, like, Roku's technically the reason why Gyatso really likes Aang a lot. Uh, must have, you know, be him, be him a great friend, and the whole friendship transcends um, lifetimes. It's kind of funny that it's Toph that mentions, like, do you think that friendships can last lifetimes? And for those who know about Korra later on, then, yeah, that, that, that is a definitely yes answer, because she, um, Calls Core Twinkle Toes like she does Rang as if like as if they're they're, they're exactly the same person without any like differences. So yeah, it's funny that talk a lot of people say that because like I knew about the whole like talk calling Core Twinkle Toes because you know if it's the Ang and stuff, but like I didn't I didn't remember that it was Toph who actually would ask something like that. So that's actually a really interesting like um, line from Toph. Uh. Next, the Firebending Masters. Honestly, really, honestly, I just feel like it's just a really good episode in general. 
Like it, it may be like kind of like out of the out of the four episodes I'm gonna mention, it's like the fourth. But then it's some, it, this in itself is a good episode. Can't really explain why. It's just a, it's just a really good episode. Like especially considering like, like um how like Aang and Zuko learns like how real fi fire bending works, um and yeah, I'll I'll, I'll avoid to say it and yeah, but and yeah, um but yeah. There, I say it again. Okay, for real, for real though, for real though, favorite episode of this season, the clip show done right, episode 17, or book chapter 17, the Ember Island Players. Oh my goodness. This is a recap episode done absolutely perfect. Oh man, it, what it is, is it's a recap episode of the entire series up to that point. But disguised as a play, so the cat, so the main characters go go to that point to see what the Fire Nation thinks or what that particular writer thinks of what the series thus far, and like how everyone's reaction to to their actor selves. And I especially love Toph in this episode. Like I love Toph in this episode because like this might be like the blind one who can't actually appreciate what's going on. She's the one who joins it the most. Cause like, um, like she's like an excuse to make fun of everybody. Um, uh, and like when her own actor shows up, she's questioning, wait a minute. I'm hearing like I'm hearing am I a guy? Like a really buff guy? And then Katara uses that moment that's saying, Oh, so, oh, like it like replicates real life, huh? And then Toph. And a subversion to what what people would expect was absolutely glad because like they like the this play made Katara this very like sad I want to say whiny but like she cries a lot talking about hope and stuff. They made Ang like a woman, like a, so they made Ang like Tylee. Uh, that's, that's the best way to describe it. They made Ang like Tylee except more hyperactive and a woman and. Aang takes offense to that. They made Sokka, like, um, questionably funny. Uh, they made her, like, super hungry all the time. Makes him think that, make him, makes him think about food all the time. And then made, like, uh, Zuko basically, like, Zuko. To the point that, like, um, uh, Katara's like, yeah, that, that's basically you all the time. It's absolutely hilarious. I like to talk about more about that episode, for how that is the perfect clip show, and like, and even then, it's still like a very like good episode, even with even with taking without the context of it being a uh, a clip show. It's in itself a great episode. It's very hilarious, very great. My least favorite episode, again, like with book two, it's very difficult to find a bad episode. Like even with book one, with the actual bad episode. An episode so not like that even in the Ember Island players, they mentioned how it's not it not important at all. Uh, there's hardly a bad episode, okay? I know it's part of nostalgia meeting, probably. Probably. But still, the show as a whole has like no real bad episodes. That being said, I need to pick something for the least favorite episode. That being said, uh, it's very hard to find a bad episode, be mostly because most of book three is leading up to the finale, somehow. Uh, even even with the Unbrowning players. So that since the end of that play, it's like kind of a what-if scenario, more than anything. So I need to find an episode from early season three for this to, uh, for, to kind of as a bad episode. And honestly, I think that... Uh, you know, episodes like one to four, fine, except for one. So three. I should I should, I should have an episode this except for one episode three. The painted lady. I mean, sure. I don't, I don't mind this episode. Gives guitar a bit more meaning. I mean, like the show hasn't already done so already. It's fine. Guitar likes to help people. But. It doesn't barely advance the story. I mean, granted, again, most of this, most of the season does, but 
with early book three, early season three, I don't care whatever this section of uh, uh, this section of the show three, and not so much. I mean, it could be left out, and okay, whatever. So it's not important, I guess. Favorite character for show, Pian Dao. Oh my goodness, this dude's cool. So I guess again, again with like with like, with like characters like Yoshi, like. This dude's cool, okay? He's a sword guy. He's, like, he's an artisan. He's like... He, uh, I don't know how I'm going to say this. He's like a very chill swordsman. Um, he doesn't care about where you're from or like... He also doesn't care about how well you think you are with a sword. He's a very nice guy. It's funny, like... Um, he wants to drink sake mostly because of his humility more than anything. Not even like... He doesn't even care about his um, sword skills or lack thereof. Like, he's more interested in, in his humility more than anything. Like, he knows, like, he probably has, you know, trained a ton of people in the swords who think they're the best in the sword, uh, the best in the ways of the sword. And then there's comes this whatever who, who barely has any qualifications, and then he's like, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll train you. Mostly because I, I think you need it the most. And yeah, Sokka deserved that. Sokka needed someone like Pian Dao. And it paid off a lot. So, made Sokka a really great character. I mean, he's already a great character, but maybe even more of a great character. I mean, like, he, he affords a sort of a meteorite. That in itself is cool. Like, who does that? That And it's, bl and it's like a black sword. Too many loses it at the end, but it's a freaking cool, like, black sword. My least favorite character, again, very difficult to find a really bad thing. So, I have to find a character that should be important, but end up not. So, this character called Cheat Sang. Cheat Sang or Cheat Song? Whatever, this dude from the Boiling Rock episode? Like, the, 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 the thing about why he's in the least favorite character segment is the... He should have actually been a, an actually important character, or at least he should have been like more involved. Because, uh, he shows up in the episode where he's kind of the, like, he's supposed to be in, the boiling lock. He escapes and then joins the team because there's nowhere else for him to go. He left his girlfriend, his friend, in the boiling rock. And the next episode, all he does is go away. He doesn't even, like, participate in the invasion. He's not there at all with the actual final battle. So he, jo so, he so he sort of joins the group, but doesn't really do anything. He just kind of goes off, like, no big deal. It's a non-character. Like, he's the thing, right? He probably could have been helpful in the invasion arc. But, like, even if, even if he is a firebender. Because, like, he's still, like, pretty, like, muscular. He's pretty, he's pretty huge. He could have done something. And maybe when, maybe as a backup, when, like, the fire comes back, he probably helps. But like no, he's um he's uh he's uh, gone. He's uh, he left. He's uh, gone. Bye. Favorite moment. Oh, we got a few ones. We got a few iconic scenes here. So book three has a lot of iconic scenes. So, but before we get to said iconic scenes, let's go. Um, excuse me, Bixby. I didn't actually. Where was I? Oh yeah, the freaking like Momo and Appa Samurai fight for some reason. It was like a nightmare episode where uh, Ang suffers a lot of daydreams and nightmares, or nightmares and daydreams. That's actually what the episode title is called. And and then one of them involved like an overly dramatic Momo and Appa fight with its swords, like samurai swords, and Appa had like a false samurai gear off and. Oh my, all the crazy nonsense that happens. I just feel like that's actually kind of cool. Like, it's, it's an out-of-nowhere cool scene that's probably there just to be a cool scene. Heck, it probably just be a cool, like, anime samurai feat, uh, scene. Just for the sake of it. I bet whoever, like, the writers or, this, or whoever, like, do the scene designs or whatever, they just want to have, like, want to roll with something kind of cool, with, like, cool anime-esque kind of style. And they just went with it and say, you know, let's do Momo and Appa. Why not? <laughs> Good scene. <clears throat> and now, 
the iconic scenes. There's two specific iconic Atlas scenes. Quote specifically. And they're both Sokka. You know, for, for you know, for someone who's like uh wants to be funny, but for other characters think it's not funny, but this this is funny. Oh, the one is technically a Zuko line, but Sokka is, is like part of it. Alright. Um for those those people who understand Atla in general, you probably have heard the phrase that's rough, buddy. Yep, that's in there. That's a favorite moment. Cause like it just Zuko and Sokka just trying to figure out how to how to like start a conversation. And they're both talking about their girlfriends. And, uh, and even Sokka was, uh, you know, when Zuko something that, that makes his girlfriend, Sokka's like, wait, really? The gloomy, like, gloomy one? And he's like, yeah. And then Sokka just came up with, my first girlfriend turned into the moon. And then Zuko says, that's rough, buddy. <laughs> I, I don't know, like, how do we, yeah, like, why is this an iconic line? But it, I don't know, I don't know why it's an iconic line. It just is, okay? It is an iconic scene, iconic line. It just is, okay? It just works. Little life stunning shows. People buy money works. Money flows. Anyway, now speaking of Sokka, the um the Southern Raiders episode. Come on. Come on, it has to be in here. Okay, so it's context. Uh Katara's mad at Zuko. Because she doesn't trust him. And then Zuko's thinking, okay, what what's going on with her? Maybe it's something to do with like her mom being dead. I want to. I'm gonna have Prince Sokka see what the heck happened to his mom to to, to their mom. He bumps into Suki going into uh, Sokka's tent. Yes, the, the, what I'm about to say is important. And like Suki's like, oh no 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 no, I, I'm, I'm leaving. Sokka, okay okay. And then Zuko goes into goes into the tent. He like the he first thing he sees he gets like. And then, it shows Sokka with this. He's like, he shows off like this in a very like, so, like um, kind of seductive pose, as I say. And he turns around and say, well, hello. And then he immediately stops. <laughs> and he stops, oh crud, oh crud, wrong person. <laughs> it's like, oh, wait, oh hey, 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 sir, go, what's up? <laughs> okay. We all know what we all like those people who can see this 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 image and like Sokka saying, Well, hello and come on, come on. We all know what's gonna happen next. Cause like, I mean people there are adults here. I mean granted this is a kid's show, but like what if, if like Zuko wasn't there, right? If Suki was going to talk talk to Sokka like intended Oh boy! Things could have gone a whole different direction. Now imagine how Top would feel. <laughs> because she can sense, like, stuff happening on the ground. Imagine if, like, freaking Sokka and Suki were, were, about to, were about to get laid right then and there. And then Top feeling every bit of that. Oh, it's gonna be awkward as heck. And the top of the problem, they have to question what's question what's with Sake and Suki last night. And then and Katara and Zuko will be like, "What did you do, Sokka? And then Zuko specifically will be like, "Oh, I'm glad I." I'm probably thinking, "Oh, I'm glad I wasn't there last night." <laughs> I'm, glad, I'm glad I didn't have. I'm glad I didn't have Sokka last night. I didn't want to be a part of that. <laughs> oh, what could have been? What could have been? Oh, that would have been awesome. I mean, would have, oh, wait, I mean, I don't know what would have been awesome, but definitely would be X-rated, that's for sure. Okay, this fair moment. Oh, again, really hard to find a bad moment, but it has to be from the, from the first few episodes because... Like every per like almost every scene from like after the beach episode, even during the beach episode, leads up to the finale somehow, and it's actually of story points. So what could possibly be a bad moment? How about a cringe moment? Like it's, it's not 
too much of a cringe moment. It's just, it's just like, it's not even a skip moment. It's like a, like a slight bit of a cringe moment. Um, when Aang goes into school in episode two, um, he's trying to figure out like, oh, trying to, you know, trying to blend in in school. Mostly because like, apparently he has school uniform. Uh, he's trying to figure out his name and stuff. He doesn't need to probably know probably because, oh, Kuzan doesn't, doesn't know that he's supposed to do like, well, I'm doing it on my perspective. I'm supposed to do this instead of this. Like, he didn't know about that. And, um, oh, to, well, to where you're from. I'm like, oh, I shouldn't. Maybe I shouldn't say I'm from, you know, the Southern Air Temple. Um, and so, oh, I'm from the colonies. Yeah, yeah, colonies. And call me, like, Kuzon, short, because I had a friend named Kuzon. Um, uh, yeah, just that, that particular scene is kind of, kind of a bit of cringe, but only a bit of cringe, okay? Not that much cringe. And now, the finale. So, what about this finale? Did I like? What about this finale? Did I not like? Um, there is no new character. I don't think there's any new characters like introduced in that those episodes. If I'm not mistaken, so I don't. I'm gonna skip that anyway. So my favorite moment of the final episodes. Well, technically I call it the final episode, duh, but it's, it's, it's a four-parter. Um, I'm combining all four parts into one segment here. Well, technically, two seconds is my favorite moment, least favorite moment. But combining the uh, four different episodes into one segment, because hey, if Netflix does it, I'm doing it too. Okay. Uh, okay, another bit of an iconic line that's from Toph uh, is the part that says, I am not Toph, I am Melon Lord! <laughs> it's just a this is the, the top Melon Lord line. It's, I don't know why. It's, it's a funny, but sort of iconic line. Enough said. Uh, next, um, when Aang is sitting down there trying to get advice from the avatars, um, he went to Roku and he said, like, that, um, all the past avatars are available to you for advice. And so he goes to Kiyoshi, and he, she goes to talk to him about how she doesn't mind killing this dude. Like, even if it's by accident, I would have done it, I would have, like, I would have done it anyway. Like, yeah, he fell to his death, but, like, if he didn't fall to his death, I would have just, you know, boop, boop. Or just, you know, because I have giant feet and I'm a tall, a tall savage whatever, you literally just stomp on him and then be dead. And then, Aang's line, Aang's line, like, after that, after he dealt with Kyoshi, saying, I knew I shouldn't have asked Kyoshi. Like, he knew that Kyoshi's probably the top dom. So, she's a tough dom, so I don't think he's gonna, I don't think any advice from Kyoshi's gonna help him, like, not kill the Fire Lord. And finally, and finally, the favorite moment when, um, Zuko and Iroh finally reunite. They hug the crowd of each other. And Iroh is saying, like, it's a good thing that you found me. And then Zuko's line. So the, so the, um, I'm going to say it without context. I'm going to say the context now. Okay. The, the line in mention is, like, it's pretty easy. Quote, you have a pretty strong scent. Context to that, earlier in the episode, um, they want, uh, the group wants to find Aang because Aang is missing. And so they go to Jiu, and Jiu and being the one with the with the shoe shoe, the one that can smell things. And uh, so they can't find Aang, so Suku said, hey, I got an idea, I'm gonna do a smell, a smell sample. And he picks up, like, Iroh's smelly sandal that flies all over and everybody, except Toph, was like, trying to cover their nose. And he's saying, like, you can't this, you can't this, like, sweaty, smelly sandal? And of course, Top doesn't care. Top doesn't mind, because you know, because you know, Top is kind of like kind of a dirty girl, and so, so of course you would like to like it. And then the smell of that was so intense that the sheer shoes immediately, like, oh, I would say dunked himself in that smell, but same idea. So yeah, I don't have a really strong scent. I'm sorry, but that that line is kind of funny. It's funny because this is a, a kind of a heartfelt scene, like a scene of happiness and everything. But then there's like one quick jab at humor out of nowhere. That's funny. So my least favorite moment, the last part I'm talking about Atla, is uh, actually in the finale. So we're actually gonna go to the finale. So Aang beats, so Aang beats the Fire Lord. Everything's done. The world is saved. Um, Zuko's crown Fire Lord. Um, celebration happens. So but right before the actual celebration, when the group goes their last shot. Zuko goes into the prison, 
and you know talks to Ozai, and the last thing he says is like where, uh, in this zoom face, right? Oh, you can see right here. So where is my mother? The reason why I put this at least right moment is because at this point in the series, way too late to matter. Like, thing is, I know it gets brought up in the comics. I know that, and 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 actually, actually shows where his mom was and what, what was going on with her, with her. But the thing is, I get this was supposed to be like sequel bait, but I feel like this line specifically is not important, and it's kind of too late. Like, if that line was not there, and let's say the comics will still bring up um, Zuko's mom, that's fine. I feel like in the series itself, it's not necessary, unless, unless there is an actual sequel TV series that dives into the, the, the stories of the comics. Uh, but other than that, right here is kind of not necessary. I think here is too late. In the show proper, it's too late. They probably should have omitted that, or just, like, have expanded on way earlier. Uh, I feel like this scene's not necessary. But I think, I think what the would have done is instead, they're probably going to talk about, like, maybe Zuko meeting up with, Z uh, with Zula, seeing that she's okay. I think that would have been a better part instead of that. So, and so, the finale is that the group... You know, have, like most of, well, most of the main characters go back to, uh, go go back to the tea shop that you know I Iro you know uh, owns now in Earth Kingdom. They all have their tea. They all do some wacky wacky things of, of Sokka's terrible painting. And then uh, Aang and the Katara have their final kiss. The end. Oh, that entire last Airbender, or at least for a while until Korra comes up, until the commies come up, but. For the time, that's it for the series. We're done. And with that, that is the finale of my thoughts of Avatar Last Airbender. Okay, again, this show is still worth watching. Like, for anybody. Uh, yeah, this show is it's worth it show for anybody. So, of course, it, of course, it gets 61 straight days of, you know, being in, in the in Netflix top 10. It deserves it. So... Um, by the time this video is posted, uh, I should be, I should already be done with narrating the Korra episodes, because I purposely, uh, set the date, the release date for the, for book, for book one on August 1st, book two, two weeks later, and this video two weeks after that, so, you should be seeing Korra episodes of September, so, yeah. Uh, so yeah, that is all. See you guys later. Hopefully, like with next uh, video, we're really the series. We can have the, the green screen fully in full back.